Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. It's time for another daily dose of dismal Disney. We're going to talk about how the friendly media is not so friendly when it comes to Bob Iger, when it comes to the Walt Disney Company. Uh, a lot of the outlets that would have vehemently defended them just six, eight months ago are now turning on Disney and saying, hey, there are some problems. Yeah, some they're problems pointing here. out what we've been pointing out for, you know, years. You weren't allowed to criticize Disney, though, because if you criticized Disney, it was like you hated gay people or something. Oh, if that you criticized was, Disney, you lost your media access. You lost your media you. access. Now everyone is like, what is up with Disney? Because the stock is dropping off a cliff. Mm -hmm. Again. Again. I want to see if it goes down past 8407, because that was the lowest it was before this. And every time you turn around, some other bad news hits. Well, yeah, let's, uh, so let's look at the, the circumstances. Last week, they lost, you know, Christine McCarthy. Mm -hmm. uh, she exited under dubious circumstances. Now she's still hanging, she's still hanging around mm -hmm. to transition, right? Which, yeah, which makes me think that maybe possibly she just got sick of their shit. Right, but who isn't hanging around at all is their, their chief diversity officer. Yeah, and they're like, oh no, no, she left her own. If she left her own, she would be sticking around she would be a couple weeks to give people notice, tell everybody goodbye. No, the HR person wrote a letter and said, oh, she says bye, by the way. Yeah. Kind of thing. So here we go. Uh, Wall Street's turning on Disney at the wrong time. Disney stock falls on bearish. Analysts note. So basically they're like, hey, yeah, now's not a real good time to, mm -mm. to invest in the Disney company. Thank God I dumped my stock when I had the chance. Uh, I only buy it when I can get it really cheap. And then if it drops below 84, I might buy more, but only if it drops really low. I remember people, just, I distinctly remember it was I remember this too. 2020, 2021, when they hit $200 a share. Disney's only going up, Clownfish. You're liars. Disney's fine. It's all fine. Everything's great. Everything's coming up. Mickey and Mickey's coming hard. That's what we were being told. Something yeah. like that. And now, yeah, that's exactly uh, what they said. Uh -huh. Now here we are. We've got Disney dining or Diz dining, and uh, they're even like, "Hey, yeah, is Iger any better than Chapek? Maybe yeah. things aren't getting Interesting. fixed." Interesting. And a lot hmm. of things they're bringing up are things that we've been mentioning since he came back. Oh my um, god! You know, because a lot of people were like blaming him for Genie Plus or blaming Chapek for Genie Plus, and we're like, "No, that was Iger." And a lot of choices that um, Chapek got blamed for, Iger had actually put into motion. And some of the things I think that they. They don't say whose fault it is, but I think that people think it's Chapex. I would argue it was Iger who grilled up the stuff to begin with. Yeah. So uh, we're look at their reasons about whether they think Iger is any better than Chapex or not. Um, but a lot of it's what we've already mentioned. Mm-hmm. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. If you do, you'll get a woohoo. Woo so here we go. This is uh, this is an article on Diz or Disney Dining. Uh, dot com. Diz Dining, yeah. Diz Dining. So they're talking about Iger being back, and they said he's like, you know, he's he's more likable person, you know, you know, something like that. Let's talk about, about Iger's charisma and charm. Anyway, his return seemed to signal forgiveness for sl or selective amnesia among fans. Selective yes, amnesia. thank you. We have said this repeatedly. Because yes, yes. he came back and everybody's like, oh my God, thank God Iger's back. And we we're like, no, this is not a good thing. I mean, Iger's better than Chapek, yes, but not by much. Iger was behind a lot of things Chapek got blamed for. And I don't like Chapek. I'm not defending Chapek. I know. So here we go. Iger. Like, we've been saying this. We saw this. Everybody's like, yes, they're going to they're gonna fix everything now. Iger is being lifted up as a hero, Disney's majestic savior. He's even been exalted to almost Walt-like status uh -huh. amongst fans. Does he deserve any of it? No. And yes, but mostly no. Yes, exactly. This is what we've he does been not. saying. Welcome to the party. We don't have cupcakes. Sorry. Iger, Iger is nowhere in the same league as, as Walt. I don't even think Iger is in the same league as Eisner because at least Eisner cared about the history of Disney. And I don't you know, think Iger cares about Jack shit other than his legacy. His and legacy. Him. The ride of a lifetime. He makes everything about him. And no. it's all about, they keep every talks about his legacy. Bob Iger cares about Bob Iger. All right. So they're talking about Ginny Plus. Oh my God. Mm. Genie Plus, everybody's saying about Chapek, and we are the ones. I know we put it early on because, you know, we cover this stuff. I've been covering this stuff when Genie Plus was announced as coming before, back when we were doing a blog for our other place, okay? So that's how we the knew. Other place, straight that's on. how we knew, yeah. okay? It was Bob Iger's idea, not Bob Chapek's. And most people were blaming Chapek, and we're like, it's not Chapek, it no. was Iger. No. Um, we've been doing it long enough. We were there when it got announced. 
Now, what's interesting though is, and again, this is coming from uh, Dis Dining, they're talking about how park attendance has hit a massive decline and the Genie Plus price hits a record low, probably because now they can, you know, they're like, hey, please, please use this app. But this thing has been one of the most unpopular decisions ever. In the yeah, parks. Like between that and thing. the park reservation, which is, it, it, yeah, it's gone somewhat. It's gonna be gone. It's going to be gone somewhat. But it's only for people who have day to day tickets for uh, annual pass holders are still pain in the ass um, somewhat. So they're talking about how um, they announced it in 2019. Okay, so I guess we wrote our own blog then, and they said it was it was Iger who did it. True. It was All rumored, true. It was rumored All for years. True. That was uh, Genie Plus or something like that was rumored for. Let's see, we started covering this stuff uh, ourselves on a podcast 2014, 2015. I want to say 2016. I remember hearing rumors about it. I think it was on like Jim Hill that they were going to have some sort of like everything was going to be pay to play at Disney. Yeah. yeah if you want to go somewhere, you're going to hear a lot yeah. of rumors that usually pan out. Go check out Jim Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would definitely recommend that. Um, they're talking here about they said uh, paid resort parking is now a thing of the past. We love that. Again, it was Bob Iger. Who implemented that the parking payment? And it was funny because people don't remember. This is back like in was it 2017? Yeah. When um that was the year that Bob Iger jacked up the prices of tickets, but jacked up the annual passes like 25%. Mm. And then stuck the you had to pay at hotels to park now. Yeah. And people were like really pissed. Like yeah. they lost their shit. And for Iger, we're gonna talk about that. Iger keeps saying, oh, oh, the price is out of control, I'm gonna fix it. He he fixes something somewhat at Disneyland. He does jack shit for Disney World. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he took the parking at the hotels away, but he's the one who put it there. Yes. Yes. Yeah, they're talking about how, you know, Bob Iger, here's what they're talking about, was saying about he wasn't fond of the price increases implemented by Bob Chapek. Right. Neither are we. But he hasn't done anything about them. True. He has done reduced price tickets at Disneyland. Summer is a whole bunch of the lowest price tickets you can get. Disney World hasn't got that. He said he's going to do stuff, but you don't see him actually cutting things, cutting prices. He can't. He can't. No. They're losing money in other parts of the uh, company. So Disney stock fell last time when they reported they were losing subscribers on Disney Plus. They overspent on content for Disney Plus. Their movies have been a disaster at the box office. You know, most of them have have massively underperformed. Even the wins are not really wins when you factor in the cost of marketing and the you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like nothing has done phenomenally well. Nothing has done even close to what Mario and Spider-Man have done this year for Disney. It used to be every, like every Marvel movie they put out, every Star Wars movie they put out. It was a billion dollar movie plus, and, and now that's, that's over. So yeah, they're historically what Disney has always done is when one part of the company is suffering, they jack up the prices in the theme parks because they know that is their cash cow. He is not going to roll those prices back. There's no reason. Now, they've had a lot of deals and stuff like that, you know, which I thought was weird. They were having deals around, like, you know, in summer and Christmas yeah, time. Yeah, they're Christmas. Hotels they're doing deals for Christmas. Like that, yeah. But. That tells you everything I need to know. So if you go back to the article, they talk about that. They bring this up, too. Go down. Well, one thing they're talking about before that is they're talking about the maintenance hasn't improved. It, it is not like it used to be. When I was a kid... Uh, Disney, they, was, now that they only had Disney World and Epcot at the time, like Magic Kingdom yep. and Epcot. Um, they used to do like one end of the park to the other, like they'd paint it and get it, and then they'd start all over again. It was like, ridiculously clean. And now everybody's been complaining about how dirty it is, trash cans are overflowing. We've seen dirty diapers on the street. I mean, that's a lot of it's on the guests because the guests need to clean up after themselves, you filthy fucking hogs. But the, um, the other part is they're not hiring enough people to keep it clean either and, and keep, uh, you upkeep. They're saying an entire building has remained damaged on Hollywood Studios for months. Fans notice issues daily. I know WWE today, don't they have like a thing they use to put up where a yeah, repair? repair? Yeah, and, and uh, Corliss, I know he was one of the ones that was excited when, when Iger was coming back. But um, he was like within a couple of weeks, I think he's like, yeah, we're going to have to have this kind of the, the state of the parks addressed again because – he was the one that was calling out like, look, you know, small world, the boats are dirty, Splash Mountain, yes. not maintain the, the animatronics. That's one of the first things that, that gets cut is maintenance. I mean, we've seen boats sink, yep. jungle crew, like they're not maintaining the stuff like they used to because they're cutting corners on it. Well, they were not maintaining that before I girl left. Right, right. This so, stuff's been happening for years. This is all about, again, bleeding consumers dry to pay you know, over pay for Fox to pay for all this other shit that they're yeah yeah and now they're saying they're going to do another 18 billion in the parks 
Maybe you should take a billion of that and go fix a bunch of shit first. Everybody talks about, you know, Bob Iger being like this, you know, genius at, at running Disney. And I'm like, what did he do? He bought a bunch of stuff that was already successful. And then ruined it. And then ruined it. They ran into the ground. It's not all Bob Chapek. Chapek was only there a couple of years. Which is interesting. You know? The next part we're going to talk about, which is about the movies. And they're talking about the movies entertainment front. Disney continues to flop. I have promised to restructure and put decision making into the hands of creatives. Yes, but that takes years. I mean, because interestingly enough, they're talking about if Disney wants to regain their titles animation king, they need to leave the agenda out of the movies. Oh, <gasps> Bigots confirmed, and they said they need to reverse course. But they said the recent failures in movies such as Elemental, Strange World, and Lightyear should be proof of that. However, Strange World and Lightyear at least would have been greenlit under Iger. Yeah, I mean they they were in production for years. Uh, they it take years. years. Yeah. So I don't know about Elemental, but Strange World and Lightyear would have most likely been under Iger, not Chapek. Yeah. Um. So but they said there is a time and place for activism. Children's movies aren't it. Oh, holy shit, Disney Dining, I like you. We have gotten to a point now where normies who don't usually weigh in on the pop culture war bullshit are noticing how fucking weird Disney is. And again, we had their d chief diversity officer who would have been in charge, she would have been in charge when all these decisions were getting made, when they decided to change Pirates of the Caribbean, when they decided to race swap characters, and they decided to take boys and girls out of the fireworks show, and they decided, you know, all of this stuff. The she, list of things they wanted to change. The list that gets Splash Mountain, the list goes on and the, on and on and on. That was when they were going to do, I don't know, they even did it, that they were going to have characters that were coded a certain way to be voiced. You know, Firing all the voice actors and then right. hiring sound-alikes, you know, which that happened at uh, all the animation. You know, if you weren't if you weren't that particular ethnicity, you could only play characters in your own lane, which is actually kind of racist too. Because what about people that aren't white getting a chance to play white characters? Because mm -hmm. back in the and we mentioned this. Oh no, that's okay. It's just only white people. Oh, okay. Maybe they it's only mean white way. people. Yeah, that's how it always is. It's only one way. Yeah, because I was gonna say because back in the day when we were kids, Rainbow Bright and and uh, Penny Gadget from Inspector Gadget, they were both voiced by black girls and they're playing blonde hair, blue eyed. Yeah. And you know what? Girls, no one cared. Nobody and even when I cared. found out, didn't no, care. But I actually thought it was pretty cool personally. Yeah. yeah. Um and they're talking about the dining now. The good news is that the, the dining plan is returning and there wasn't a whole lot of price increase, guys. I was worried they were gonna gouge the prices on it. They have taken away um well, some of the, the snack credits, you don't get as many as the snacks as you did before. That's true. They have taken away some snack credits. But the prices weren't increased that much. And so I was surprised about that. But so the dining plan is returning and the park reservations are going away. Yes and no. It depends on if you're Dave Tass or an annual pass holder. So they said it's an improvement. And they said, uh, we can say that the reasoning isn't as straightforward and, and generous as Iger would have you to believe. That's true. But they said that we're getting a couple wins. The changes would definitely be an improvement to the guest experience because the park pet reservations and Genie Plus have been two of the biggest complaints from guests. Mm -hmm. They're a pain in the ass. People, when they first started doing it, people brought their tickets, didn't know they had the park pass reservations, showed up and said they didn't have a reservation, they weren't allowed in the parks, even though they had bought their tickets because it was so damn confusing. All right. And I know I said they limit, they have to limit um, guests in the park, but I mean, it was, it was insane. But they said overall, Iger has done some things right. He's missed the mark and others. In his half year back in charge, there's been a lot of talk with very little action, at least not positive action. We are skeptical as, as elevation to hero status. Yep. Right there with you, Disney dining. Been, been saying it. Much of this seems under, under, undeserved. Time will tell if he makes good on things he said. I doubt it. He's only supposed to be there another year and a half. What can he get done in a year and a half? Except I don't think he's going to leave. Yeah, he's going to pull Palpatine and be like... I am the Senate. Oh, not that part. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Yeah, I, I get emergency powers, right? Because Disney is... Wow, uh, we're in a really bad state right now, guys. I can't leave because if I step down right now, it's all going to go to shit. Who else do you have? Because I fired... So many people that could have been my I mean, successor. they left on their oh, own. They left on their oh, own. Wink, yeah. wink, uh, wink, yeah. wink. Yeah. Uh, but I'm doing good. I fired the diversity officer, so we're not going to do any more of that race swapping shit until I hire another one that's worse. Yeah, that I said to you, I said, we don't know. It could get worse. Because Apple that'd be wants, really stupid. Apple wants me to hire somebody that's worse. Because they're getting yeah. really stupid. Things are failing because like, they've been trying to shove things into kids' films, and it's not 
working. They've been trying to shove dudes into the bibbity bobbity boutique too. Oh so, yeah, there was like, that. That's what there the hell. That, yes. You know, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Well, side note: If you have a chance to go to the bibbity bobbity boutique and you have little kids, and they do a print, they do one for boys too. Recommended highly. Daughter loved it. It's expensive, but it's like a one and done. And you don't have to buy their outfits. Um, people don't know that. They think you have to go in and spend all the money on the clothes and stuff. You do not. You can bring your own princess outfit with you or prince outfit, if you will. And you can bring it there and, and buy it online, cheaper on clearance or whatever. Ours was made by my mom. And then bring it in and then you don't have to pay the hundreds of dollars for stupid dresses. I'm sitting here thinking like, if Bob Iger's listening to this, he's like, oh, hey, Whoops, we need to fix that. No, no, no. You have to buy one of ours. You can't buy Yeah, one. probably. That's the next thing. That's no, you thing. don't have to buy their like what like two hundred dollar dresses. Yeah. Can't bring no. your own food anymore. You guys. don't Sorry. have to do that. Just yeah. you know, just pay for the, the package, get it done. It's fun. Your kids will like it. Just you don't have to do it every time. One and done's good, but they'll love it. So there it is. I just think it's funny that other places are now saying the exact same thing. I, I give them credit because they just they went there. They're like yeah. the stuff you're putting in kids' movies. No, not working. Just make organic stories that are just fun and, and have diversity organically. I don't think we're ever going to have the Walt Disney Company be what it once was. I think what's going to happen is we will have small. I think this is just in general. I was thinking about this the other day. Um, I was actually thinking about it in regards to, um, you know, video games and comics. Like we're never going to get the companies that we loved growing up again because they become too corporate and too big. Mm -hmm. But we might get smaller, scrappier companies doing things that feel like, you know, something that would have been produced by Disney years ago or would have been produced by certain video game companies or publishers or whatever years ago because they actually still love the the project. They mm -hmm. love the art. And there's no, there's no love at Disney. It really isn't. Disney is just cranking out product. Yep. And that is the difference. Walt loved pretty much everything they did. He had a hand in everything they did. And even Eisner, for all his faults, you can tell the guy actually loved the Walt Disney Company. And he loved everything about Disneyana and what it meant to America. Iger loves Iger and how he can say Iger he loves, was the CEO of Disney yes. and the power that came with it. Yeah, That's he wants, what he likes. He wants to be the final CEO of Disney as we've known it. And, the and final boss. The final, the last emperor. Yeah, the final boss. He wants to be the final boss of Disney. And he might get his wish because it might get to a place where Disney is in such a battered state that the only out for them is to sell. Yeah, but it's still going to be Disney. They're starting to keep it Disney. In so, name only. Yeah. It's never going to be. Well, it's kind of just Disney name only it is, now. Well, so. that's, that's what's sad about it. They really are. Disney, current year Disney is just Disney and name only. They've got the characters. They've got all the stuff that you loved growing up, but they don't really care about any of it. He's a collector. He's like the collector from Guardians Kinda. of the Galaxy. He's collecting shit. But he doesn't actually care about any of it. He just wants to say, I own well, this. I think it's funny, too, it. because he kept he kept spending and spending and spending and overspending, like, on Fox. The Fox deal is, is if you had one thing to point to as, like, indicative of Iger and his thought process was the Fox deal and how colossally effing stupid that yep. was. And now all that, that shit runs downhill, and he's at the bottom of the hill now, and it's all coming down upon him. And it's his own overspending and stupidity, and the choices the companies allowed. Um, you know, you don't promise Star Wars fans a Han, Luke, and Leia, and then they'll put them back together again. That was the that was the, literally the promotional material for the, the you know, movies. Right. Like, look, guys, we've got them all around the table reading the script, all of them. Right. So together. you're so you're like, okay, you so know? what do people not want? You know, or what or, or, or give us what people want and then do the opposite. Yeah. That's kind of what they've been doing. Horrible. Anyway. Anyway, we're gonna wrap this up. Everybody sees it now and it, you know, we, I just it, think it's funny. It's like we were like the we were like the black sheep. We were like the tarot, don't, don't go near your clownfish, don't go to your pirates and princesses. They're anti Disney. The do they, they, they will taint you. Oh, don't we, go near them. We look like we look like freaking pixie dusters compared to sites like Inside the Magic. I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> yeah. like they have really gone in hard in the, the paint. All right. So we're going to wrap it up. Yeah. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And we'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.